on you guys I'm back with another Harry Potter video now in this video I'll get into something that I've been kind of alluding to for some time and there's been quite a few people online debating who the chosen one was whether it was Harry or Neville the answer is both of them. They both were the chosen one. And this video is about that prophecy I mentioned in the Saint video. This is the Harry Neville prophecy. It all started back before the first movie even began. Civil Trelawney, in other words, the fortune telling teacher, or whatever it's called, spoke with Dumbledore about how a boy born at the end of July would cause the downfall of Voldemort. Snape heard this and told Voldemort about it and he realized it could be about one of two people Harry Potter and Neville Longbottom. He chose to go after Harry Potter. And he ordered Bellatrix to go after Neville Longbottom's parents. She kind of taunts him in Order of the Phoenix when she's introduced. And obviously we all know what happens when he tries to kill Harry. And throughout both their years in Hogwarts... Harry becomes a more skilled wizard. Well, they both do, but Neville starts out as that very awkward kid. But in all honesty, it's not really his fault. The wand he's using, the same goes for Ron. The wands that they use, those aren't their wands. They're someone else's wand. Someone from their families. And so... Over the years, they both grow as wizards. Now, as Order of the Phoenix comes around, Harry is very frustrated with the world because at that point, everyone turns against him because everyone thinks that he lied about Voldemort coming back. And, and in The Goblet of Fire, when people start calling him a liar for the whole incident with The Goblet of Fire, and he turns to Neville for help when it comes to the second task, the book that he, that book that Neville uses to track down the gillyweed to help him breathe to help Harry breathe underwater was given to him by Alistair Moody. And in that scene in the classroom the curse that he was using that made Neville cringe, that's the curse that Bellatrix used on Neville's parents. And that's why he was cringing, because it was bringing back a memory that he did not want to remember. Again, going back to the Order of the Phoenix, Neville struggles when he joins Dumbledore's army, but then he really starts to improve. 
and you see him and Harry having a heart to heart. And he's explaining, you know, like who Bellatrix is. And then when she's introduced, okay, um, I want to get this out of the way. Helena Bonham Carter, if you ever see this, you are one of my favorite actresses of all time. You're beautiful, you're talented, but as Bellatrix, you look like a mental patient. I do not like Bellatrix. Mainly because Sirius Black is my favorite character and Bellatrix kills him. So, in other words, not only that, but both Neville and Harry lose people that they really care about. And Sirius was the only family that Harry had left. And then, the kicker to it was in Deathly Hallows Part 2. After Harry's death, the Hogwarts courtyard, Neville realizes that he has summoned the Sword of Gryffindor. And he makes a big speech standing up to Voldemort. Knowing that the last Horcrux remaining is Nagini, the snake. As Voldemort and Harry battle it out. Who's the one that kills the last remaining Horcrux? Neville. Who finishes off Voldemort? Harry. They were both the chosen one. Of course, Harry wasn't as awkward as Neville. But you gotta give Neville credit. He might not have been as skilled with a wand as Harry. But he's just as big of a hero as Harry. And so... Both Neville Longbottom and Harry were the chosen ones. And this is why. They were both destined for greatness. The prophecy became true regardless of which one JK Rowling intended it to be. But now that it's out in the open, it's both of them. And now you know why. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will upload a Kingdom Hearts video this Friday. So until then, stay tuned, stay awesome. See you then. Bye.